Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 369. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show. And today we're talking about handling hate. I'd like to invite you to go over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and check out everything we've got there transcripts and photo and video and 368 other episodes. If you want to check out our products, those are at whistlekick.com and you can use the code podcast15 to save 15%. Or if it's more convenient for you, you can shop on Amazon. Most of our stuff is on there, but we can't give you that that code. Amazon takes a chunk. It's a good chunk. Let's talk about this topic. Let's talk about hatred. Hatred in general, hatred in the martial arts. Now the first thing, I got to be honest, This is take two, because I tried doing it in video on my phone, and the screen shut off, and it cut off the video. So I'm doing it again, and I'm doing it audio only, because I know how to do this. This is reliable. Sometimes you have to fall back on what's reliable. But this topic is difficult, because it's stemming from a specific incident with a specific person who hates me. Now, I'm not going to name them. I'm not going to give you specific details. Some of you know me personally. You have an idea. Maybe you even know exactly what I am talking about. But it doesn't matter. Because I'm using the specifics to talk about the general ways that I handle this. The way I look at this challenge. Because let's face it, as Whistlekick grows, we have been facing more and more hate. And you know why? Because hate is really jealousy. If you look at the way people handle each other online, the way trolls do things, people don't troll nobodies. People go after those with large following, those that they wish they could be. And the irony of this person who has spent three years attacking me publicly, privately, doing everything they can to ruin my reputation, going so far as to lie to other people, about things that I have done and things that others have done is that they've accomplished quite a bit. They're known in certain circles of the martial arts community and really should be better known that they are. But why aren't they? Because so much of what they do and how they do it is full of hate and anger that other people just don't want to be bothered with them. I'll give you a little bit of a timeline. Just about three years ago, I had an exchange with this person, a very brief conversation, that they felt disrespected. Now, in hindsight, yes, I was disrespectful, but not intentionally. There were a number of mitigating factors. This person, in a sense, came to me with something that was not a big deal at a time when I was struggling. I was in the middle of conversation with others and responded with less than ideal candor or conduct. There is a better word. And I admit that. Now, I've attempted to have a conversation with this person multiple times, and their reply each time I've reached out has been one of hatred and anger. And now this person has gone so far as to publicly attack me on Facebook. Wow. Okay. So how do I handle that? Now, first, I have to be honest, it stings. Because even though this person is not in my life anymore, they were. And I appreciated their help and their friendship. And in a sense, I miss them. I don't miss the challenges of their friendship. But there was a point in time when I was probably their only advocate. This person was supportive and helpful in the early days of Whistlekick, and specifically this show. And just because things turn sour doesn't mean I'm rewriting history. I'll never forget their contributions. And I still appreciate them. And so how do you handle it when someone that you looked up to does a complete 180 in the way that they treat you? Well, first, you acknowledge that it hurts. At least that's what I do. I accept, you know what? this sucks. I'm not happy about it. And then I spend some time understanding why. Why does it hurt? Well, in this case, it's someone that meant something to me. 
someone who I would say should know better, someone who I wish had been above it all. Unfortunately, I knew this would happen at some point with this person because this is what's happened with every single person that I've ever known who has known them. At some point, you do something, probably pretty small, that upsets them and bam, you're done. You're out. You are persona non grata. But then the other thing I do is I try to understand their perspective. And that's not easy. That's not something that we do well as human beings. Empathy. When it comes to this individual, they haven't had an easy life. And it's easier to push people out than to open yourself up and be vulnerable when things don't go the way that you want. See, we're all the hero in our own story, our own narrative. And anything that challenges that perception can be really difficult to handle. And it takes practice, and it takes confidence. And unfortunately, that's something that I don't think this individual has much of, is self-confidence. It's unfortunate, but they seem hurt, maybe even broken. And I don't wish that on anyone. And as I start to understand the place that they come from, whether it's this person I'm talking about or anyone, I find it much easier to handle what they dish out. Because I don't wish anything bad on anyone. I try to have compassion, significant compassion for the people around me, the people in my life. And as I come to understand more of who people are and how they are and why they are, it makes it easier to forgive them. Doesn't mean I forget. Doesn't mean I change behavior. It doesn't mean that I allow them any freedoms in the way that they treat me. Because I hold myself to a high standard and I hold the people around me to a high standard, including the ways that they treat me. But carrying hate in retaliation to others' hatred of you, well, that's just silly. It's wasteful. I've only got so much energy to spend in the day, so I try to spend it on positive things, things that build my life, things that build Whistlekick, and not things that bring me down to the negative level of others. Now, of course, this takes practice, and unfortunately, I've had a lot of practice. I've always been someone who has pushed boundaries and set high standards, and that means that quite often, people are unhappy with me. I don't do status quo. Whistlekick in and of itself defies the status quo in some of the things that we're doing, and especially in the way that we're doing quite a few of them. We've invited hate from some rather large organizations and some rather prominent people in the martial arts community. Good. Tells me we're doing something right. I have a saying, and if you've read the competition, the event book that I wrote, you know it well. Do things 15% differently each time. When you do something, find a way to make it different. I think we even did an episode on that. And in doing that, there will always be people who say, whoa, 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 hold up. That's not how we do this. Well, guess what? This is how we're doing it this time. And if it works better, that's how we're doing it from now on. Because you can't have progress without change. And that is a difficult concept for many in the martial arts. So as I've invited this hatred, this displeasure that so many, I shouldn't say that many, it's not like it's been that many, that some have had for me and this show and the things that we're doing, I use it as an opportunity to learn. An opportunity to get better at understanding others, at hearing their concerns, at being compassionate, and at being myself trying to let it roll off my back. I'll be honest, the way this person conducted themselves hurts. After all, I'm doing an episode because of it, but I'm trying to take it and use it in a positive way. I try to take that negativity and use it as fuel. When I was younger, when people would tell me I couldn't do something, well, guess what? Now I'm definitely going to do it. I'm going to find a way. That's whistle kick. 
People told me this wouldn't work. The numbers of people who told me this wouldn't work, we've already grossly surpassed what they said would happen. We've already exceeded the expectations of so many. And I take pride in that. Most of the world would tell you, don't let the negative sayings and actions of others bother you. And I think that's far too simplistic. If something that someone says bothers you, understand where they're coming from, understanding why you feel that way, is the next step. Some horrible horrible grammar there, my apologies. And then decide to take action. Sometimes you have to wait, you have to delay that outcome, that choice. Emotion doesn't make for the best decision. Sometimes emotion has to fade so you can fully understand intellectually what's going on and take an appropriate action. Retaliation is usually fueled by emotion and is rarely the best course of action. As I heard it expressed on a podcast just yesterday, think about what the outcome you want is and work backwards from there. Don't start from where you're at. Don't start from your emotions. Don't start from the hurt. Start from the desired outcome and figure out how to get there and choose accordingly. So, to person out there who is hating me and to all the others who have and will hate me, thank you for the opportunity to get better as a person. And I hope maybe someday you can find some peace because there are far more important things for you to do with your time and energy than to hate me. I would love to hear what you think about this. Head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Leave some comments. This is episode 369. You can find us on social media. We are at Whistlekick on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. And you can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Don't forget the code podcast15 at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.